Thanks for being here, John. Thank you, everybody who's joining us on Zoom and Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Thank you all for being here. I'm John O'Long, and I am the owner here at Social Sphere Media. And we build websites and do search engine optimization, manage social media, and uh, do uh, Google ads. Normally, on our podcast, our, our webinars, our, we, we talk about those things, but wanted to do something a little bit different this month and invite my friend John Davis on. He from Davis Business Coaching. And uh, we have gotten to know each other through the Walton County Chamber of Commerce. We've got a pretty active, awesome local chamber here. And so we met there and uh, we've started working together on some projects. We work on his social media. We've got some mutual connections and just a bunch of good stuff. I have enjoyed uh, getting to know John. I think today is going to be good because if you're a business owner or even just have a life at all, I think time management is tricky and I spend a lot of my time just kind of running around putting out fires and John has a really cool way of connecting our time to our business goals. I'm excited for us to hear all about that and I invited him here and actually just did it so that I wouldn't have to pay for a coaching session. This was just kind of a <laughs> trick to get an hour of your time. So anyway, John, tell us about yourself, introduce yourself and anything else you want to tell us. And then let's jump into uh, what you're going to share with us. Thanks. Thanks, John. Really. Thank you for having me. It's, you know, like I said, it's been really cool uh, getting to know people in and around the community. I don't want to go too deep, but you know, I'm a business coach with Action Coach. I've been doing about a year and a half. Action Coach is a global company. We're in 70 countries, got a thousand coaches around the world that lean on and support one another. Prior to that, I spent 26 years out in the corporate space. I'm an engineer who could talk to people just enough that they put me in front of customers. So I became marketing, product strategy, business strategy. And in 2020, I was part of the great resignation. I just, I was like, I need to do something else. This is, it wasn't fulfilled. So I found business coaching and I said, Hey, I, this is something I can do. And I know I'm going to love it. Actually, yesterday, I think I had my best day ever of just wall-to-wall -wall coaching sessions. And it was so rewarding. It was cool. The cool thing was when I did it, you know, if anyone out here has gone from corporate to entrepreneur, you think you're going out there all alone and you're going to be alone. The cool thing is you meet everybody else who's out in that space and you're not alone. You meet people like yourself, right? You meet the people that I can see on the attendee list that I know. And you realize it's just a different, you, right. you build a team of people that you work with and a community that you can rely on in some extent, even better than the people you worked with <laughs> in the corporate space, because <laughs> there's more motivation, more focus, and a lot more clarity in objectives. So that's a little bit about Action Coach, a little bit about me, and just very grateful to, to meet you and get this opportunity to share. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, not to just throw you a curveball here, just out of curiosity, what's your favorite book or what's a, the best business book you've read? Uh, recently or are reading or have ever read? Uh, it depends on the topic. For what I do, I love the book e about, you know, building your franchise prototype. It really is the essence of what we do. I just rattle off a couple others because I can't stick with one. I'm going to overachieve. If, if you're talking about selling and you have complex things, I love the book Spin Selling by Neil Rockman. I'm reading two right now. And I'm not done, but I can already tell they're going to be great. One is Speed of Trust by Stephen Covey. It's about how trust can increase the growth of your business and inside the business. Another one that's not highly well known, he's actually a sports guy. He's a pitching coach and he's in our community, Dr. Jackal, and it's called Get the Mud Out of the Water. It's all about the things we say in our head. And, and so much as business owners, we focus on our liabilities and our challenges. And this is more about goals and, and what are your assets and leveraging those assets. So you asked for one, I gave you four. That works. I'm, I'm always looking for good uh, book recommendations. And uh, I'm in the middle of reading Never Lose Another Customer. Not because we're losing customers, yeah. but it was recommended by someone. And it's really great. It's really more just about making your client experience awesome. Especially that first 90 days when you've got a new client, new customer, just kind of blowing their mind with how awesome you are. And because really a lot of you know, whether or not they're going to stick with you, a lot of that's determined in those first 90 days or so. Uh, but 
in anyway, my struggle, I have had to learn to manage my time. I'm not there yet. I get distracted easily. I don't think it's a, I, I don't know. Everybody's like, well, I'm ADD. I'm ADD. I don't think I'm ADD. I just think I've got a lot of stuff going on and, and I'm a fairly decent delegator, but there, there's just still a lot of things that only I can do. And I've tried lots of different things. I've gone from a paper calendar to a Google calendar. And, and, you know, I even stopped creating to-do lists for a while and every to-do became a calendar item. And then I just found myself moving them later and later and later. And, you know, now I, I use a few different tools, but um, anyway, I'm excited to hear what you've got to say about time management. And uh, so I'm just going to be quiet and uh, I'll probably interrupt you with some questions, but I'm going to let you take it from here. I love the interruptions. And uh, so uh, some things to think about your, with your time, even before I get into what I brought here is, you know, there's things you work on. They're either, they're urgent. They have some level of urgency and they have le some level of importance, right? There's mm -hmm. things that we do that are not urgent, but we still find ourselves doing them. I guess you could call that procrastination, right? They're probably easier things to check off the list and we can feel like we accomplished something. They feel good, right? It's good to have those things because sometimes they're cluttering your brain. and it, There's a thing, just get it off, get it out of your mind. Just like the Dave Ramsey, some debt things, just pay them off, get them done. So that's not urgent, not important. And then you've got urgent and not important. The last two days, my daughter's asked me to take her guitar up to the school because she kept forgetting to take it with her. It was urgent, but it wasn't important, at least not to me. So right. you have to recognize those things for what they are, and you have to decide, you know, are you going to do them? And you have to put some account for that when you're putting together your calendar. You have to realize those things are going to come up, and you have to build in a little bit of extra capacity. And then you've got, let's see, I said not urgent, not important, urgent, not important. And then the flip side is not urgent, but and that's where you are really working on your business. That's the 20% of your time you're setting aside to really grow your business. And then you have your urgent and important, and that's the daily tasks, calling customers, fulfilling the operations. And that's really where you're going to work on a lot of your, your core practices, spend a lot of your time. But the key is to find the things that are very important, but not urgent. Then that's like your strategic planning, changing your systems, improving your processes, brainstorming your marketing, making sure you put time aside to do that. And that's where this exercise comes in, is to understand what the value of your time and how you use it. And this is really more of a tool to use that I put together in the spreadsheet. So all things aside, have you ever heard of DISC? I have. I can't remember if I've taken that assessment. I've taken a million of them. Is that the one where it's like you're a lion or ox? Or no, something? that's the other one that's very popular right now. I think that's Enneagram. Well, the, the Enneagram's like one through nine and I'm a six, which is called the loyalist. But then you read the description and it's like, you worry about everything. You are a worst case scenario person. You're miserable. <laughs> like, it's like... It's like, okay, cool. Six is the worst. So anyway, right. uh, I can't remember the one. I, I know one of the churches I served on staff at, they made me take the one where, you know, they're like, you're an otter. And I never knew uh, what that meant. I've heard so. of that one. I haven't done it. But DISC is, you're either more outgoing or you're more, you're going to be proactive. You're going to be the first one to start a conversation or a reserve is you're going to lay back. And then you're either more people oriented, you're more task oriented. So for context, so D is dominant, right? They're, a, a more aggressive, more proactive, but very task oriented. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do these three things, bam, and I'm going to get them done. I is outgoing and people oriented. Those are the people who talk to anybody. We have somebody we know in common. She always says, I'll talk to a door post, the railing post, right? She'll talk to a doorknob. She'll just talk to anything. She just loves to talk. S, the reserve people, reserve, but people oriented. They really like to be around people, but they don't need to be in the front. They like process. They like some structure. They don't really like change. And then there's C, which is reserved and task oriented, much more analytic. I am a high C, which means I, I really like spreadsheets. So when you asked for a presentation, I gave you a spreadsheet. I couldn't follow your rules. Which one is a procrastinator? They can all have their elements of procrastination. Ds will start something and never get it done because they got people to finish it, right? Eyes are too busy having fun, so they never get started. Everybody can be a procrastinator. I, a C likes to procrastinate by analyzing the crap out of it. Ready, aim, 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 and it's never doing it. Paralysis by analysis yeah. type deal. Anyway, so I put this spreadsheet together, and this is just a summary sheet, right? 
So the most important thing is to understand the dollar value of your time. Many times we waste time. Oh, man, that was a waste of 15 minutes, right? Or uh, you call customer service and they put you on hold and you're sitting there for 20 minutes doing whatever. You know, like, man, you just wasted my time. But if you know the dollar value, it becomes a whole other level of urgency, right? Even though you can have an unlimited money, if you do the right things, we all have a limited amount of time in life, but we all react to the dollar figure differently. So that's why I like to put a dollar figure on your time. We're going to talk about understanding how you spend your time, measuring it, reviewing it, and in ways that we can optimize that investment. And some of the things that you're going to do, things you're going to stop doing, things you're going to delegate, things you're going to outsource, you're going to get better at it through training, and then you're going to enjoy your life. So those are kind of the five steps, if you will, that I'm sharing on this. Cool. So first, I'm going to go into knowing your dollar value of your time. I really like this exercise. Now, I have to keep it consistent. I filled in the numbers, but we can calculate it all we want. But so in this business, I have a hypothetical business owner who's running a business that's $2 million a year. Okay. Your business could be 10 million, it could be 200,000. And I like to put this in terms of your goal. Like if you want to be at 2 million, then the next thing is how many hours a week do you want to work? Right. So I, I used 40 as our normal life, but I have a client who only wants to work 25. Okay, great. Put that in there. Right. And how many weeks a year you want to work? So I did 50, two weeks vacation. But let's say you're like, no, in my business, I'm going to take six weeks of vacation. All right. Okay. Well, then, then you're going to work 46. Right. And let's say you, you want $2 million business. You're only going to work 30 hours a week and you're going to work 46 a year. Right. That means you're working 1,380. And what that means is you're responsible for creating $1,449 for every hour you work. That's the value. Because <laughs> even if you're not doing selling or you're not doing all the production, everything happens under you as the owner. That's the value of your time. I'm going to keep the math simple. So I'm going to change this back. In this case, it's $1,000 an hour. Or $17 a minute. So if there's any business owner on there who has a $2 million business that works 40 hours and 50 weeks, you have just spent, let's see, 15 minutes with us. You spent a fair, you've spent some money with us already. So hopefully you're getting value out of it. Everybody is losing $1,000 by coming to this. This but costs it, you $1,000. Thanks for being here. But it sets your, it sets your brain for, if I'm going to do this, I got to get something out of it. If I'm going to a network no. event, right? Okay, so that's the first thing, understand the value of your time. The next thing is, now some people may hate this, but it goes into the, well, you may not like doing it, but if it's important for your business, then you should do it or figure out how to do it. Just looking at that already stresses me out. I'm sure it does. There's apps out there. One of my clients uses an app called Toggle, T-O-G-G-L. Yeah, our team uses that, yeah. Okay, you can use it for billing, but you can also use it for measurement. You don't have to do it this way, okay? but the output is eventually the same. You're basically logging what you do. Now, you can log it by the hour. You can log it by the quarter hour, you know, by half hour, by quarter hour, by five minutes, 10 minutes, or you can do it the more discreet you're gonna be, the, the more accurate it's going to be. And depending upon your nature and how quickly you can do it, it can be a non-issue, right? And I was amazed when I started doing this, how many things I do. I think it takes me 15 minutes to do it. And then I go do it and I log it. I'm like, wow, it took me six minutes, right? Like things have compressed by measuring it tighter. I get more things done. Now, it could just be maybe I'm bouncing around, like you said, from thing to thing to thing. But you realize some things don't take 15 minutes. I have tracked my time. Of course, I did it old school, which I normally don't. But just uh, I, for a week, I just tracked everything I did. And because I wanted to figure out what am I doing that someone else could do? I wanted to figure out how many hours. And it turned out there was about 21 hours worth of things that someone else could do. I did figure out though, that I think tracking it may have sped me up. Some of it helped me from, or stopped me from procrastinating. I think just because I knew I was writing it down and it was going to be embarrassing to write down like went and made another sandwich 30 minutes after I'd written that down the first time, you know, so it, it did. It, there was some accountability in that too. Even right. though spreadsheets stress me a little bit, I know this is good stuff. You can do it by paper, right? If your job doesn't allow you to do this, you're driving all over the place. It doesn't make sense. You can do it after the fact by memory, but you know, some sort of electronic app helps you measure a lot more. And I'll show you how, how I do that. I do a lot of my work sitting right here. So it's just, 
you know, alt tab, enter the tab, move on to the next one. But anyway, so you, you enter in all the different things that you do, but you can see in this model, someone spent half an hour getting ready to work with a client. It's 500 bucks, right? So you got to think about in this model, right? It's 500 bucks. So what, you, what I do then, and again, I am a spreadsheet nerd. Not everybody is, but I'll help you with this. Uh, I can send it to you. It can turn it into a table. And this is where a non-paper system is very helpful, an electronic system that can summarize and go, okay, I spent... 1750 with clients. They spent $1,300 doing email, $1,000 making their sandwiches for lunch, right? Well, in this model, remember this person is $2 million. They're worth a thousand bucks an hour. At that point, it's, just, it's worth paying someone to check your email for you. Exactly. So you do all this, some of it jumps off the table at you and right away you get better at it. Have you ever heard what gets measured? In well, you can't see it, but on my dry erase board, I have what gets measured gets done. Is that too? Yeah. What I've heard. Same thing. Even just doing a tally of sales for the month. You ever buy a car and you're sitting in the sales manager's office waiting for that final negotiation? There's some whiteboard where they're counting. You can see the car count of cars they sold that month. Oh, yeah. It's visual. They see it. Yeah. You measure it. It gets better. Same thing here. And you also realize, oh, my God, the, the second most thing I do is email. I need to be smarter about my email or I maybe need to do it, but now you start thinking about it. So the next step I do, and you can do it a couple different ways, is then you, you rate those things on the skill level and the fun, the enjoyment you get out of it. Because there's things that I like to do that you may hate, right? It's gotta be whether it's enjoyable for me. Now, skill can be two different ways. There is, is it a high skill task? Or do I have the skills? So you kind of, you can put either hat on there depending upon what it is. Usually they're closely aligned, but there are high skill tasks or there are tasks that my skill is low or not sufficient, social media, right? And that's why I contract with you, right? To do my social media because do I enjoy it? Yeah, but it's a little bit of a burden and can I do it as efficient as you can? No, it's more efficient for me to outsource my time for social media. So you go through and you rank these things. Client meetings, that's high skill. In my world, I enjoy doing client meetings. That's what we do, right? Email, not really low skill. And it's really not a lot of fun. <laughs> now, <laughs> some people like to get lost in there. Lunch, I didn't rate that, but it's, wait a minute, that's a thousand bucks on lunches. Um, I'm, I'm very skilled at lunch and <laughs> it is very fun. <laughs> okay, well, you could, you could, that rated. goes in the high box, man. That goes in the okay, high box. You can rate it if you wish. Your website, that's a pretty high skill activity, you know, and managing maybe low. Client prep, social media, whatever it is. Create advertising, you know, create advertising. That's low skill for me. I could probably have fun doing it, but it yeah. doesn't mean I'm great at it. All right? Printing flyers, managing your receivables, training people, driving. I'll tell you this right now, I spent 10% of my week driving and that is an eye opener because it makes you get very yeah. efficient about where you're driving and what you're doing. Personal stuff, invoicing, whatever. So these are different things. Then you throw it into this, this matrix here, skill, high and low, fun, high and low. Just drop those tasks in those different boxes. And you can see what I put on here. So in this case, client meetings and training, high skill, high fun for this individual. Well, do more of it. That's your sweet spot. That's where you thrive. Now, if it's a lot of time, you can still look at ways to be more efficient with it, right? That's the next piece. You know, more efficient with uh, time blocking, calendar blocking, skills like that, automation, processes. Maybe there's some components of it that you can still delegate, but you own that task. That's your sweet spot. Doesn't mean you're not efficient, but that's where you focus. And depending upon the size of your business and the size of your staff, you start looking at the things you're not going to do. So in this era of low skill, low fun, in this example, emails, printing flyers, receivables, invoicing, cold calling, mailing, stop doing them and delegate. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur who's in month number three, depending upon your resources, you probably have to do a lot of these things. But the, the other thing is you realize the other key component is when you do them, depending upon what your business is. A lot of businesses have a prime time. My business prime time is nine to five. I coach businesses. I coach other business owners during that time. I can talk to a business owner at nine at night, but it's probably not prime time. So some of these tasks, you say, okay, I'm going to do it not in prime time hours. But right. 
The things that are low skill, low fun, get them off your plate as quick as you can, right? Things that are not fun, but are high skill. In this example, website, I, I don't know that you can really outsource client prep, but it may fall in that category, but recognize that's a necessary evil. That sounds bad, necessary evil. I don't mean to say it's evil to prepare for clients, but you get the analogy. But social media, there's other people that can do it better for you. And here's the thing, your barometer on this is can you find someone to do it for less than $1,000 in this model, right? Can you hire somebody, you know? And, and actually you could, I put it as outsource, you can delegate as well. You can, if you're big enough, you can hire a social media person, but you have to look at their time value. No offense, I didn't mean to step on your toes, but you get the point. And then the things that are high fun for you, but maybe you're low skill, right? You can work on some training, right? If you really want to do the advertising, okay, well, how can you improve your skills at it? Right, or how can you supplement uh, what you're doing? Or you can outsource. Do you find guys have a hard time giving that up? The things yeah. that they enjoy, but really someone else should and could be doing? Absolutely. Well, I have a perfect example, protect the innocent here. And it's not just maybe that they enjoy doing it, but also they think that they are the only ones that can do it. Yeah, I, I do that. Yeah. They think it's this high skill thing that nobody else can do. When I was talking to this client yesterday, I'm like, well, what do you have to do to get that done? Like, we got this thing 80% done. Let's get it done. Well, I just need to spend some time. But it was it was going to take them an hour or so mentally. And I was like, well, you have somebody on your staff that could probably get that thing about 80% the way you want it, right? Well, yeah, it kind of fits her job description. She might not do it perfectly the way you want it, but why not get her to do it, to do the bulk of the work, create a, a good version, a first draft, and then now you just come in and tweak so instead of thinking I have to do it for an hour and a half, I own this thing, spend two minutes, communicate to somebody, let them get a bulk of the work, spend another 10 minutes reviewing it, they update the, the, the work, they finish the work, and you're done. You cut it from an hour and a half, and you're not doing it, and let someone else get it done. If they can do it 70, 80% as good as what you can do, then by all means, delegate it. The concept is you know, working off the list. Right. What we do is we work down the list and say, okay, how can I get more efficient? How can I stop doing it? Who can I give it to? And then part of being efficient with it is time. It's a really big thing. So an example of that is, and I can only speak for myself right now, it's top of my mind, is I try to put my client days on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. Right. And you know, Thursday's a networking day for me. And Friday's a catch-all day where it's I work on finance and marketing. And in doing so, I'm in a certain mode. So it's client, 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 or it's we're doing all the financials before the weekend or whatever it may be. Time blocking is a huge element of it and sticking to your. So how, how do you deal with the fires that pop up that need putting out? Well, you know, it's a time blocking day. It's which speaking of time blocking, this is where I do get distracted. I, I found this handy dandy little, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's called the time box. I found it on Amazon and it's just got 30 minute blocks. And so it's, you know, every night at the end of the day, I go through and kind of plan out tomorrow's stuff, stuff that I've got to do, but I haven't done what you're saying with the exception of like, we don't do meetings on Mondays. Mondays is kind of our catch up day. But even when I've said no meetings on Mondays or, you know, Tuesday is kind of team day and training day and meet with the team day, the email from the client comes in, Hey, I, I need this, you know, and the stuff pops up and that's so, the stuff that gets me. I think there's a couple of different things. So time blocking, you kind of have a master calendar and then you have what you made for that day. First thing is when that thing comes in, is it more important and urgent than what you're doing? So by having identified where your best skills are and the value of your time and it comes in, the first thing is to filter out, do you really need to react or not, right? That's the first thing to, to assess. Does it really need to be done in the next five minutes or can it be done in an hour? The next thing I like to do too, when you time block, is you can put in capacity. So a great way to put in capacity is your meetings are 50 minutes long or 45 minutes long, right? Mm -hmm. And stick to it or your timeline or just flat out give yourself 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the afternoon that are open. You don't want to just be reactive, but build in capacity for those things. And if you don't need it, you can pull something forward, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just start That's early on the next thing. 
and that's a good point because I, I think the way I'm wired is I'm going to fill up every block and get you know be the most efficient I can and then yeah something pops up that you know 10 30 a.m that is something that does have to be dealt with it is kind of urgent after I've assessed it and let's assume this is actually urgent but then now you know you've thrown off the rest right. of the day, which is really aggravating when you're doing it by pen and paper, because now I've got to go scratch a million things out, you know, that, that irks me, but yeah, that idea of leaving some margin there, that's good. And capacity, right. Morning, afternoon, know what things are high mental requirements, put them in the morning if you can, because we're all fresher in the morning. Even if you're not a morning person, I am not a morning person, but I'm still way fresher at 10 o'clock than I am at two o'clock. I'm not a morning person either. I'm kind of a 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. person. I'm right there with you. Before and after that, leave me alone. Which is when you do your lunch. Exactly. I'm a lunch guy. The other thing, too, is by being uh, diligent about your measuring it, when you say, okay, this takes priority, there's two things you can do. One is you can just do it and leave your calendar the way it is and never adjust it. The other is actually move it. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. I'm not going to do this for the next hour because I have to deal with this crisis. I'm going to take care of that tomorrow morning and I got to move on. Now, you may not be able to, do it, able to do it in the minute, but recognize that you didn't do that and reaccount for that time in some fashion. Don't well, just skip it. If you go back to the Enneagram, the Enneagram six is we're worriers. I could worry before I could walk. I was raised by my grandmother who was a worrier. So, you know, my natural inclination when a fire pops up is, oh, I just got to deal with that right now or somebody's going to be unhappy with me you know, and I put the stuff that is important uh, to the side. But what I have found in time blocking and evaluating these things is it does bring some peace knowing that I've got, yeah, this, this fire popped up, but it can wait. I've got three to four left open with some margin there with, with some time, you know, some extra capacity. And I know that this thing can wait until three. And so I'm going to put right. it there. If you are a, a chronic stressor, which I'm working on, but I, I know that that does bring the blood pressure down, bring some peace that, hey, there is some time or, or even going ahead and, and putting something because I'm bad about looking at the to-do list and, and not doing anything because I can't think about just that one thing. I'm thinking about everything I'm not working on right. instead of the thing I am working on. My wife's like, why don't you do that? Just work on the one thing, check it off, then go to the next thing. I'm like, that's easy for you to say. But I look at the entire list, the way that I battle that is, no, at least I know that it's scheduled for two o'clock today. There is some planning there and, and I can let go of it until two. Yeah, I can take it out of my brain until I have to. You know, you, you triggered a couple thoughts in there too. One, brought up a book, Eat That Frog, right? Have you read that one? What's it? Eat the Frog? Eat That Frog Eat that. by Brian Tracy. So I the concept is, there's like 21 chapters of the books, but I, I think it's the same chapter over ever and over. If you have to eat a frog every day, now I know some people like frog legs, but if you had to eat a frog every day, the most disgusting, horrible frog you had to eat, would you rather do it in the morning or at 11.59 at night? Right? So some people say, well, 11.59, I want to put that off as long as possible. But all day long, everything you do, you might be focusing on talking to your client in the back of your head's like, I got to eat a freaking frog today. You're not focused on what you're doing because of that. Often in business, the frog is the thing that's most important to what we have to do to succeed. It could yeah. be marketing, it could be selling, it could be operations, it could be understanding your money. Every day you have a frog that you have to deal with. Do it first when you're sharpest, when you're brightest, and you're going to have the hardest thing behind you, and the rest of the day is going to be easy. So get that done first if you can. The other thing that I do that works for me, and I'm working with clients on it, and you talked about preparing your next day. And it, you may have something like this on that sheet. What are my goals for tomorrow? And I put a comment there for surprises, lessons, and gratitude every day. So I write my goals for tomorrow. Next morning I get up, I review that list as it's still there. At the end of the day, did I get them done? And you have 20 things in your to-do list, but did you get those three things done? You make a note of what are your surprises, right? Oh my gosh, this customer surprised me with this urgent request and that threw me off. It's a right. chance to go, is there anything I could have done about that? What can I do differently in my business to minimize those surprises? Or, you know, and that could be in the lessons. And in gratitude, it's just a good way to be grateful for what you do. But the other thing is when you went through your goals at the end of the day, you had four things on there. You got three of them done. You know that one there, the one you didn't get done, has to go on tomorrow. Or 
put in the time right now and just bang it out. So it bounced around there a little bit, but it's all about getting stuff done and you got to make the most of your time to do it. That's super helpful. Especially, I, I guess I've heard the eat the frog thing before. And I think logically I could say, oh yeah, I know I should do the tough thing first, but when I'm in it and, and just the humanness of me wants to put it off and put it off and put it off. And so I'm pretty notorious <laughs> for that. So th that's a good, something I need to implement. I'm sorry, I'm bouncing all over, but I have another client. She had somebody who actually, she developed a, a website for him and he didn't pay her. He didn't pay her. He owed her like $2,000. Didn't do it, didn't do it. And, and she was afraid to talk to him. She was carrying this thing around for weeks. So we had a discussion. Well, what's the worst that's going to happen by confronting this? The worst thing is going to happen is he won't pay you. Well, he's already not paying you. <laughs> the worst thing is already happening. And how long will it take to ask him? 10 minutes. Okay, how long have you been carrying this frog? So would it be worth 10 minutes of pain to get that behind you one way or the other? Yes. We hung up. She called me 15 minutes later. He sent over the money. Wow. <laughs> That's the other part of the yeah. granularity of measuring the time. It's five minutes. Just do it. And then now we need a strategy for not starting on a website until we've got 50% of the yeah. payment up front. <laughs> yeah. There's there's another life lesson in there. Uh, that's yes. our websites don't go live until you've paid the balance. The cool thing about being the web guy is that if you stop paying, I can take your website down. There's a lot of leverage there. So she really had the power there. So I'm, I'm glad she had you to give her that push. That's that's good. Uh, that, that's really good. I know there's several things that I've got down here that I know I'm I'm walking away with and I need to spend some time. It's just, again, and this, I feel like a broken record here. And everybody says, you know, you're so busy working in it that it's just hard to work on it. And mm -hmm. you're trying to keep your head above water. And I find myself, you know, the time that I could work on it, it's like, okay, emails, we've got the email inbox, you know, beat down and, you know, the tasks were good there. But now it's like, oh, well, you got four kids now and you probably should go be a husband and, mm -hmm. and a dad. And so then it's that trying to flip the switch and like go engage and be a, a person and be a family member versus like, okay, well now would be some good time where I could actually read and work on the business. So one thing I'm trying to do is just, just get up earlier and before everybody else is up, because it's one, it's quiet, no one's bothering you. And like you said, it's not really prime time. I'm not getting emails from clients at 5.30 a.m. That's also something that I'm trying to implement. But again, like I said, I'm not a morning person. I'm a lunch person. So that, that 5.30 <laughs> is pretty rough, especially when summer gets here and the kids are not in school. So well, I hope this helps. It's a lot of you know, different things here, but you, it, the biggest thing is know the value of your time. If you don't know the value, you're just wasting it. And it, it's literally money falling out of you. Absolutely. Well, that's huge. And so if you're identifying with this and you're like, oh yeah, I, I need some help there, then reach out to John. What, what's your email, John? It's John Dave at actioncoach.com. So reach okay. out to John, give him a call, shoot him a text, email. And John is a good guy to work with. And, and I'll tell you, not to throw anybody else under the bus. I was in nonprofit world. I was in church world, a church staff for like 20 years. I, I kind of had this side business and then it became my full-time deal back in 2020. Now that you mentioned it, I guess I was part of the great resignation. I didn't really think of it that way until just right this minute. Immediately, there was a lot of business coaches that, that came out of everywhere. Like, oh, you got a business. You know, it was, I, I, I remember feeling like, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I just was like, well, okay, well, I'll ask them questions. And, you know, not impressive. So I got to say, John is one of the... The few business coaches that I've met that I would actually say, you need to call this guy. He Thank can you. actually help you. And man, I don't recommend hardly anybody to anybody because it always burns me. I want you to trust my advice. I'm very slow to recommend people. But like I said, John is on the short list of people I would recommend. I don't just throw that around. So definitely, if you're looking for some help, not just with time management, but, but anything related, you know, business finances, operations and, and fulfillment and production, whatever. John is well-versed and has a broad range of knowledge. So quick little plug, if the website and social media or our advertising is one of those things that you're spending a lot of time on and you're realizing that your time would be more valuable spent elsewhere, definitely 
hit me up, John at socialsphere.media.com, and uh, would love to talk to you about that. We can help with all things online, and uh, we work really hard. We've got a great team. So, John, thank you so much for being with us. Everyone who attended, thank you so much for giving us your time. Just real quick, I'm going to say, you know, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, John, but also I'll, I'll give a plug. Uh, right back. You guys do my social media and it takes a big thing off my plate. I try to do some of my social media. I want to keep some of it personal, but I know that if I don't get to it because of whatever, I've still got my bases covered and, and you guys are doing it for me and I get to participate in the creation of that. I appreciate you saying that. Appreciate it. So we're here for you and anybody who needs our help. Hope everybody has a great rest of the day. John, enjoy the rest of your day and uh, we'll talk to you soon.